So, um, yeah, so um, I'm running the meeting again today. Orlin is still on vacation. Um, he's the community manager. Um, so just a couple of quick updates. First on the, on the um, release um, timeline, uh, we have, a, we have uh, decided to um, do a 192 release. Um, we have a PR here, an issue here that has, oh, just to clarify, um, is my screen sharing fine? Can people see that? If yep. Okay. Um, so, so we have a, a an issue here. So it's not switching to that, but um, uh, the, the to list the issues we want uh, um, PRs we want to cherry pick to um, one nine two. So if anybody has any other uh, merged issues on main that you think we ought to consider for one nine two, um, this is the issue we can discuss those. Um. And again, mostly, you know, if there are bug fixes, um, relatively small changes and no CRD changes, um, we should be able to you know, get those in if um, somebody has a reason that need them for 192. Uh, for 110. Scott, um, uh, sorry, uh, one yes. question. Sorry, I missed the last meeting. So are any of these uh, any, uh, like uh, blockers or, uh, so is there a reason why we are building 192 uh, uh, in short duration? Are, any of these uh, well, bugs significant um, enough to? I mean, I think there, I, there is this, I believe one of those is a CVE um, was involved. Okay. And then there were some other issues. I know that uh, on the Red Hat side that uh, Shubham and I had identified that we have customers that are hitting, um, you know, that to kind of have a fairly significant impact on, like with one, for example, that had a fairly significant impact on restore. It was causing restore errors. Um, anytime someone was using the, um, um, the, Data mover that we're adding um, on the LEDP side. Um, so basically, these are you know bug fixes that, um, and, and then with, with the CVE, we wanted to get that out anyway. Um, and but but while we have this release identified, if there are any other bug fixes that you know are impacting people, um, that would make sense to get into 192. This doesn't affect the 110 um, time frame, which is ongoing. Um, the meet the meeting two weeks ago uh, it was announced that we were pushing the previous dates back by a couple of weeks around um, 110. So the feature freeze for 110 is now a week from today. Um, feature complete on the 19th of October uh, and hope to actually get the release out. Uh, release candidate starting early November, or GA mid-November. Um, that's the current um, plan timeframe. So Power Protect, we are releasing uh, Power Protect uh... Uh, this month and going with 191. So that's why I was curious if there are yeah, any. Yeah, uh, if I'm um, trying to, you, know, you you might have a look at those those issues to see if there's any of those that affect you. I, I think one mm -hmm. of them was for the specific, I mean, the, the CVE that I know of that I think was on here is relating to um, the Golang version we were building with one, mm -hmm. um, 11711, and there's a CVE that identified that is fixed in 11712. Um, I don't remember if any of the other ones are CVEs or not. With those, um, let's see. Yeah, that, okay, that's um, yeah. That, uh, there's an issue with um, storage class name that was causing a panic. Um, okay, this is just relating to CSI plugin. Um, this is another one that was causing a panic. So we had a couple of bugs that mm -hmm. were causing the Valera pod to crash, um, and then there was yeah, actually I guess there were a few of those. Um, and then again, I don't see the CVE listed here, but I have seen the PR, uh, I think it was merged already, or um, that does address that. So if none of those specific bugs are relevant to your use cases, then you know we don't need to worry about that. Um, I don't know if we have a precise date identified for 192 yet. Um, I, think the, I think when it came up, although I don't know if this is firmly decided, it was um, the idea was probably by the end of the month. End of September, yeah. Okay, end of September. Yeah, it might be too late. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so we'll go with 191 for now. Thanks. Okay. Um, and then on in terms of status updates, I'll go ahead and go through my own. Um, I've um, taken over the plugin versioning work that Fong was working on. Uh, we got his PR merged. Um, and then I've got a couple of other follow-on PRs relating to the um, 
actually, I said that's a mis mistake. I should fix that. It's the back of item action, not restore um, PRs that are waiting review. Those two PRs should get us to the point where we have everything we need in place to be able to then add a V2 for backup item action. Um, I have a proof of concept set of PRs where I just created a new API version for backup item action, added a function called foo just to show that it, everything here works. Um, and I created a example plugin that used that, that implemented that uh, V2 and was able to run uh, and then updated and then my PR updates Valera to use the V2 instead of V1 and was able to show that uh, V1 plugins, you know, compiled without this change uh, from before it worked was fine. And in the example plugin where I actually register a V1 and a V2 plugin, both of those run, the V1 runs through the adapter that's part of that uh, V2. Because um, part of the way with this works is that if you're adding a new uh, function, for example, to the, in your V2, um, you also, as part of this, provide an adapter, which will provide uh, you know, default uh, behavior for that function as appropriate so that an existing V1 plugin will still work. So you don't have to immediately upgrade all your plugins um, as long as the default behavior is acceptable for your use case. Um, that's not, those aren't PRs to merge. Those are just to show, every, to, kind of, to kind of test and prove everything in the previous PRs do what, we need them to do um, to enable V2 plugins, um, but those can also be used then as a model once we identify what that V2 plugin API looks like. Um, and I'll get to something later that relates to that as well. Um, next steps for this would be to do similar refactoring for restore item action, volume snapshot, or other plugins um, to kind of. There's a certain amount of work to get everything ready to kind of moved around because basically these V2 plugins have to exist in different packages, different Go packages and kind of side by side. So um, there's a lot of small changes and a lot of files that have to happen for those to work. And so basically we can model the restore item action, volume snapshot and all of that based on the previous work done with backup item action. Um, I also have um, still the PR out for the item action plugin design. Uh, and this is the design to allow plugins, both for store item action and backup item action, as well as volume snapshotters to initiate um, a, long, a long running operation, possibly run by another controller uh, as part of the plugin execute. And then Valero will then call back into it later to check on progress so that it won't move the plugin to, or the backup or restore to complete it until the, those background tasks are done. So this is just the design for that, not the implementation. Um, once that's approved, one of the consequences there is then to, because that design involves API changes to the backup item action and restore item action plugins um, that were, um, and volume snapshot. So once we have the versioning infrastructure in place, then we can go ahead and define those API versions with the additional um, method arguments and new methods needed um, to start that work. Um, so that's, that's, that's the kind of tie in there between those two. Um, I also have one more PR that's, um, I got feedback last week for adding volume snapshot location credentials. This brings VSL uh, API kind of up to the same level that VSLs are, which allow um, you to have different credentials for different locations. Um, and the, Basically, the feedback was, this is good, but we need to update the doc, which is fine. So um, the plan is to update that doc and in the comments the kind of response to feedback this week. Um, so I'll be working on that. And then again, ongoing work with the plugin versioning as well. Uh, so that's it for me in terms of status. Um, does anybody else have any status updates before we get to discussion topics? Or any other questions on, on my update? Okay, and then Shivam, did you um, you had a topic about one nine two? Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to um, have some confirmation on the PRs that I added to be cherry picked. So maybe uh, Beijing team can respond on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 haven't, I haven't seen any actual cherry pick PRs yet for those. Um, I know they're on the list and they were identified. I saw in Slack that it was kind of a comment to say, hey, we should do this. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen those PRs um, 
cherry picked yet. Okay, maybe uh, we can see some activity next week, like this week. Sorry. Yeah. Right, and, and I'm not sure what the what the code freeze is for that either. Uh, it's something else we should probably maybe we should ping on Slack, just kind of kind of discuss that offline to see. Because yeah, we need to make sure that basically everything in that issue identified needs to get into onto the one nine branch. Um, mm -hmm. And again, if anybody else identifies anything else that we need, uh, we need to make sure those the things slip through the cracks there. Because I know for OEDP, we're relying on some of those. Yeah. Because, um, you know, well, especially the ones where where they you know, you know, they crash the uh, Valero. Um, well, I guess we have two 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 kinds of errors. There's the ones that crash Valero. There's two of those really, uh, in there, and I think only one of those affected us directly. Um, and then there was the one, the, um, the fix where we actually are failing um, restores, then we shouldn't be failing them. Yep. But we definitely need those in 1.9 to. Uh, that's it from my side. Okay. Uh, did anybody else have any additional questions or topics to bring up? So hi, this is Pradeep. So I was kind of uh, last week uh, at VMware uh, Explore. I was talking to some of the customers uh, who use Valero. And one of the thing came up in kind of, uh, actually a couple of things came up. One of uh, that like, can we support NFS as a storage location for backup? And this is kind of widespread topic I've heard multiple times. Uh, I know that we support object uh, storage only for that, but there are some commercial solutions to start supporting the NFS as a backup solution and then when people compare, they come. So I just want to know that what is the feel of community on that yeah. part? Yeah, that's good to know. And, and I know I've heard the same, I've seen the same request, you know, on the Red Hat side from customers. Um, I know I know our current answer for that is that um, you can always, um, you know, bring up an S3 compliant object store on your NFS infrastructure, you know, something like, um, um, you know, Nuba or uh, something like that, um, or, or Minio. Um, that's kind of been the, the standard Valero response in terms of what we yeah. can support now. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, the same I, thing. But, the same thing I was mentioning. Only the question was coming. It's additional cost. Yeah. Uh, bringing it to any S3 bucket and NFS is more of a standard already customers have invested. Right. So, so they look at overall cost of ownership, and that's what they say. Uh, maintaining sure. another vendor, another kind of cost is uh, is challenging. Like you are bringing right. one more vendor in the game. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and I, I guess I guess the, the I'm trying to remember. I I know there was an issue, the, one or more issues. Like I kind of I was looking this up a year or so ago, and, and you know I, I know there had been issues put into GitHub, you know, about this mm -hmm. in the past. I, I don't remember whether there were any of those were ever investigated. You know, whether anyone looked into, mm -hmm. you know, how much work it would be, you know, yeah. to actually build in the code to work directly on a file system rather than an object store. Um, mm -hmm. You know. It, because yeah, I, I imagine we basically would need to, to build a plugin that essentially yeah. implemented some of those yeah. kind of object store like functionality within the yeah. plugin itself. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, to Valero, it looked like an object store, but the plugin was just writing directly to NFS yeah. or yeah. And, something like that. Right, exactly. Um, you know, it, it, it might be worth searching the, the, the closed issues to see what was. Yeah. how those were you know resolved in the past i mean obviously we didn't do anything for them but i mean was there a discussion i, I think i saw it? i saw one of the issues was mentioned it was also tagged to 1.10 and then removed at okay. least what i would recommend that we should investigate the part as in 10 to know that what's the kind of possibilities within yeah i mean it's, like you said it's, it's worth looking into you know yeah. If we were to do this, how much work would it be? How reliable yeah. would it be? You know, is this something yeah. worth considering? Something, um, yes, yes. And, and, and just, I guess the starting point would be to, to, to search for previous issues to say, okay, did someone else yeah. do an investigation, you know, two years ago mm -hmm. and we can build off that or do we, are we starting mm -hmm. over basically? Yeah. Uh, I, th I think that makes sense, especially, you know, as we start into the question of 111 mm -hmm. scope, you know, is this something worth yeah. looking into? Um, Oh, it, might worth, it might be worth creating a new GitHub issue for mm -hmm. as kind of a starting point of discussion. Okay. Because I was also looking at, I think we store the backup as a tar.gz file. It's end of the day, kind of a one big zip file. You should be able to kind of write onto any file system that files. Yeah, if you use metadata and all information, maybe in object format, but the final backup file is one big target, right? Which we download and do that. So probably 
something we can uh, yeah as i said I, maybe we can open a new issue but i know there is a existing issue which has okay and if there's an existing we may just be reopened yeah. if it's closed yeah um, we can just kind of start at that yeah, um, yeah it's yeah it's still open it, uh, it's one double two nine i guess yeah so. if, if you could um just link it into the discussion topics here so yeah. you know, we'll have a record for kind of looking at the meeting to say it was also kind of a point to to, to bring up so, mm -hmm. so people can start looking at looking at that again as well that would make some, make some sense yeah. then yeah i'll just add it to a discussion topic uh, and uh, the second thing which kind of um, question came and then i was not very much sure that how uh, to do that is all about like if we have a, a big volumes how do we kind of uh, do incremental snapshotting and all on those. So it was around like uh, if you have an actual database and all, and those are the kind of a flat file. So yeah. so today, if you use a stick and all, it's a it's a single byte change in the whole big flat file. You have to be replicated yeah. back on an incremental. So, so Restic does do incremental backups um, right but now. But it's a fly file level, right? So every file oh, right, is right, testing. Oh, right, right, it's the file level. That's this, yeah. File so, level, um, yeah. So, Databases are the big fat file, so yep, right, exactly, yeah, 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 and so so it kind of beats the purpose of incremental. So, questions are like that. We need a better strategy in Valero for incremental backups, uh, uh, file based versus block based things and all. We are moving to Copia. I think it will be still file based Copia. Yes, yeah. Uh, however, what options we can kind of consider in future from block based or something which is which can make efficient incrementals and all, especially the databases and all kind of things. So. That's one consideration I heard. Uh, and another one, which kind of not directly, but when I was analyzing, like we need a better, like for objects uh, backup, we have a lot of strategies uh, inbuilt. Uh, for example, you can override, you can skip this particular object type and all, but for volumes, uh, we have a very flat strategy. Like you do annotation, it will skip or not, which is kind of a more of a, uh, someone has to do a manual work, but so strategy right. could be more of like if there are the different kind of volumes in a cluster, uh, anything volume which is a CSI compliant, we just go first with the CSI and then anything non CSI compliant uh, can be go via uh, a type or, or or can be excluded based on the size or type. Right. So, so so make some better strategies where user doesn't have to worry about it, and sure. Valero makes a better choices. So. I will open a kind of a GitHub issue to see yeah, that. that makes can... sense and again, I, I think there may be, uh, I remember seeing discussion on one GitHub mm -hmm. issue that was specific, someone had put a request in. I think yeah. that one was specific to, you know, backup. By, excluding, yeah. Yeah, that was excluding. By type. Yeah, but this is a little bit different, I guess, because it's, it's, you know, yeah, this is, yeah, more choose a strategy based on type. Strategy based, yeah. So, so have a kind of a uh, backup volume strategy base where users say, okay, first preference is my CSI volume snapshot, second is my. Uh, any data copy uh, uh, option. I, I don't want to say restic or copy. We should say something more generic term like copying data to a backup location or something. Or right, right, exactly. Uh, and, and that's that's true because snapshot. basically the, the, the whole copy versus restic is handled with the different the different switch. Because yeah. for for a given backup, yeah. you're going to use one or the other. Uh, but but that's considered a single strategy. So like you said, whether yeah, it's file based backup yeah. or whatever you yeah. want to call it. Yeah, uh, something like that, and then. We, we define user to give a strategy at Valero backup level so that they don't need to worry about annotation or, or, or kind of, because today, if, if you start using a restrict or um, in future copia, that takes the first preference and then CSI volume snapshot take a second. Right. But in the future, since we started to support the CSI volume snapshot, ideally that should take a first preference as a more, because that's a more crass consistent versus yeah. that. So we yeah. should look but at it, those right. strategy. Ways. I should, should point out in terms of first preference, we actually have, we work both ways. Um, um, basically, there, there, there's, a, there's a flag to say whether Restic is default or not the default, and so, and mm -hmm. then you have to annotate, but, but we still have the annotation, you know, you have to annotate yeah. based on. So, in other words, if Restic is the default, then you annotate the ones that you're not using Restic for, that you would then use CPA, CSI for, mm -hmm. or if CSI is the default, uh, well, CSI or mm -hmm. snapshotting is the default, mm -hmm. then you would annotate the for Restic, but it's still an annotation-based selection. Yeah. Uh, what Some, we do yeah, allow we you to can... switch the primary. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. It, you know, if you're talking about a, a kind of a more flexible approach in, instead of yeah. instead of annotations, some some other yeah. kind of set of rules to determine which the one rules to, to use. Determine, yeah, which one to use, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so these are the kind of some of the things uh, based on the discussions came out uh, with some of the kind of uh, customer and partners. I just want to give a quick update on that.
Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and probably an issue for that for that kind of rules based yeah. um, one would make some yeah. sense. So we can kind of discuss, you know, pros and cons, and you know what what kinds of implementation would work there, and you mm -hmm. know, and, and like you said, you know, identify. You know, this is something that came from you know customer requests, so that's kind of so we kind of know that this is something that you know there's a real world use case for rather than just you know some idea. Hey, this might be nice because um, mm -hmm. it's kind of good to separate those out so that we know you know here. If there's a customer out there for you know someone using Valero that wants this and here's what they want and you can kind of because a lot of times you find that someone else will say hey I have a customer that wants that too and then you know we have to come up with a plan that works for the kind of combination of use cases from different customers with different you know because we, we may have um, you know IDP users at Red Hat that that you know want something similar and so we want to consider their needs into this as well and kind of you know even though a single customer from a single you know vendor might be the kind of reason to add the uh, issue um, once you create the issue you know in the upstream project you know we we have additional customers from additional users that that have other use cases and we can kind of come up with kind of the overall approach that that meets the majority of those yeah makes sense thank you I'll open issues, no worries, you know, bring it up. Okay, um, did anybody else have any other questions or issues to bring up? Um, now we can go ahead and attend this a little bit early. Uh, next week's meeting will be at the, um, um, the 8 p.m. Uh, time, um, kind of the Beijing-centric uh, meeting and that's the point where we'll see where we are with features and you know with the feature feature freeze and you know kind of probably additional hey this is in or this thing is not in you know that, those kinds of discussions will be um, relevant there. So okay, well thanks for for that. I'm going to stop the recording now and we will uh, meet again next week. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you.